Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actor who is best known for being the voice of Splinter in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mr. McKnight in Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost, Dr. Marsh in G.I. Joe, Master Blaster in Kid Video, Grapple in the original G1 Transformers cartoon, Master Renegade, Psycho and Waterwalk in Challenge of the Gobots. Henry for the Country Bear Jamboree at Disneyland and um, you might also have seen him as Lieutenant Hannah in the film The Computer That Wore Tennis Shoes which also starred uh, voice actor Frank Welker as well if you didn't know. My guest is Peter Renaday. Welcome! Thank you, thank you very much Amber. You're welcome, it's, lovely to, it's so lovely to speak to you even if it's just over the phone I feel like you're in the room with me at the moment it feels really surreal. <laughs> That's good. That's the way it should be. Yeah, definitely. So, I just wanted to start off by saying, how are you? Oh, I'm doing fine today. As you said, where you are, it's pretty hot, and it's it's been real warm here in Burbank. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I didn't realize you were in Burbank. I just I have a lot of guests from California, and it's like, I didn't realize how big California was until I actually saw like a big blow-up map of it. I was like, oh, wow, it's actually bigger than I thought, because you've got like, Burbank and Glendale then Malibu, then San Diego, Los Angeles. It's crazy. Yeah, it's all spread out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Peter, it's th- just thank you so much for accepting my little invitation to be on my little YouTube show. It's been... It's been it's been a while. Um, we uh, we first spoke um, over email in 2020 for my Bill Scott documentary that I was producing for YouTube. Um, and even though you didn't work with Bill, you you enjoyed his Bullwinkle and Dudley Do Right characters. So what I wanted to ask you was, well, I believe you would have been about your in your twenties at the time when Rocky and Bullwinkle first hit um, American television screens. Did you grow up with Rocky and Bullwinkle? What was your favorite segment? What do you remember about it? Well, I was a little old for, uh, I guess, well, I wasn't old too old then, but uh, yeah, Bullwinkle was on TV and I didn't get into TV until after, well, after the 60s, because there was very little TV reception where I grew up. And I didn't have a TV set until I was about 24, really, 20, 22. And then I was called into the Army to serve my two years and came back. And it, and uh, then I started watching TV. So I missed all of that early TV, Ah, unfortunately. I wow, I didn't know, I didn't know that. Wow, you're, you, wow. You're, you're a trooper. You are a real trooper, Peter, definitely. <laughs> oh, well, it's... Uh, it took a while for me to really get around to because you know for a while you had I was working all day and then at night I'd try to get in plays so I was either driving to the theater or performing and working from 8 to 5 mm-hmm. at the studio and uh, I never really had much time to watch television at first but I had certainly watched plenty of movies because when I was a kid, I got into the movies free because my uncle owned the theaters. And I spent hours and hours and hours watching movies. I'm sure that's where I learned to do any foreign accents because in those days, there were a lot of the uh, European character actors on screen. And I loved to try to pick up their accents. So it came in handy years later on with, uh, with cartoon voices. Wow, and um, uh, I, P- so Peter, you're, you also have a different name that you've acted under before, um, which is Pierre. You, you've acted under the name Pierre before, if I'm, not, if I'm correct. Uh, I never got any screen credit with Pierre. Pierre is my legal name, though. Pierre Laurent oh. Renaudet. Ah. Named for my grandfather. Ah, <laughs> I see. But I, I received screen credit as P.L., Mm-hmm. And Pete, R E N O U D E T. But most of the time, it's for cartoons. It's always been Peter Renaday, R E N A D A Y. Uh. I started with the Renaday pronunciation because people kept mispronouncing R E N O U D E T, and not surprising that they would mispronounce it. But I finally tried to get him to do it phonetically, 
still doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I still get a lot of mispronunciation with Renudit and Reinhold and everything. <laughs> How do you pronounce it, your last name, the uh, R-O-N-O-U-D-E-T name? It's pronounced pretty much the way I spell the professional name, Renaday. Ah. Originally, it, it would have been Renaday, but nobody says that. Even in Louisiana, they don't pronounce it with that heavy a French accent. Ah, but, right, uh, I yeah, see. Yeah, it's pronounced Renaday. Ah, I see. Yeah, because um, I'm having a look at the credits for Computer War Tennis Shoes, and it says you are credited under the name of Pete Renaday. Yeah, right. spelled as a R O N, O U O U D E T. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to actually ask about that film. I've seen it before. It was on uh, Disney Plus. Well, I think it still is. But I watched it on Disney Plus, and it's actually a really good film. Uh, what do you remember about filming uh, that film? May I ask? Because I know it had like oh, Kurt Russell and Cesar Romero and everyone like that. You mean Computer War Tennis Shoes? Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun to do. Uh, Frank Welker was in it. <laughs> yeah, he was indeed. And, yeah, we didn't find I didn't find out about that. I mean, I never really got to spend much time with the young people on the show. <laughs> Kurt, I was on in several movies with because he was also in Family Band, and I was in uh, my usual policeman role in The Barefoot Executive, and all of those are starring Kurt. Well. Family Band didn't star Kurt, but little did he know he was acting in, in the scenes with his future wife, Goldie Hawn. Oh, wow. I don't know that. That's really cool. Oh, bless. Yeah, take a look at the, the one and only genuine original Family Band, starring Walter Brennan and John Davidson, Leslie Ann Warren, and Kurt. And then a very small, she was really a dancer in the show, and she had one line. Oh, I think he's cute. Uh, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Well, I'll definitely get a chance to look it up after we finish recording. I promise you that. I will definitely check it out. I will definitely also watch the Computer War Tennis Shoes again. Because, wow, I, you know, it's it's such a good film. And seeing, like, you and Frank Welker in it, and this was, like, years before you did cartoons together. This was, like, uh... I'd say about 16 years before you did... No, hang on. No, I, 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 I miscounted. 15 years before you did Transformers together. Before we did uh, Transformers? Yeah, that's yeah. Probably, that sounds right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just move it, just, just, uh, you know, like smoothly moving on to Transformers. Um, you, you, vo- you voiced Grapple and you also voiced uh, Lord Chumley as well. Uh, and I th- right. there was another character that you voiced. I'll have to just quickly check it out. Um, you voiced uh, Professor Green as well in the episode uh, Desertion of the Dinobots, which was the first part. Uh, so, of course, right. everyone knows Wally Burr voice directed the show and he was known for his really long recording sessions. Uh, so I was wondering, oh, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what was your experience with recording in the booth with everyone else, like Peter Cullen, Frank Welker, Casey Kasem, Michael Bell, Corey Burton, everyone like that? What was it like? Oh, it was great. They're all, you know, they're all so good. Uh, and we had fun over at Wally's. Uh, the sessions would go a bit long on occasion, and I think that was the reason that they got around to changing the the rule and you couldn't take more than four hours to film to a tape a half-hour show. Yeah. So, because... <laughs> uh, we tended to take all day long over at Wally's, which wasn't necessary. Oh, bless. Yeah. Michael Bell got a little upset about it on t- from time to time. Oh, did he? Oh, bless him. He was the second person I interviewed. He was, he's so nice. It's just... it's. So... He is a nice guy. Yeah, he definitely Talented is. Talented guy. Yeah, bless him. Yeah, it'd just be so cool to meet everyone in person one day. I'm trying to get to America next year, so I'm just like, going to meet everyone who I've spoken to um, for, for my show, so... Yeah, hopefully we could we could try and organize a little meetup, maybe. I don't know, like a little the Transformers reunion. I just have to get everyone who I've spoken to who was in the uh, original cartoon. I'm trying to think off the top of my head who I've spoken to. So, Michael Bell, yeah. Hal Rail, uh, Neil Ross. Uh, who else is there? Well, of course, there's you. Um, 
Oh, who else is there? I have probably... There's a few more, but I can't remember because I've done over 50 episodes. <laughs> I'm terrible at remembering yeah. stuff. But yeah, there's a lot of people. Um, yeah, I'd like to have uh, Peter Cullen and Frank Walker on my show someday. I don't think it would happen, though, because, that, because they have such busy schedules and everything like that. Well, last, time I, last time I saw Frank, he was flying over here to do a job. <laughs> He flies his own plane, this son of a gun. He does indeed, uh, yeah. He flies a Beechcraft B-36 TC Bonanza. Yeah, look out. That's very nice. I mean, I, I admire anybody who can fly a plane. Myself, I wouldn't even think yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Not at my age, especially. <laughs> yeah, because uh, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you, Peter? How old am I? I just turned last month. Just turned 87. Wow! Oh, wow, wow. You go, you go, my guy. Yes, Peter. Wow. Oh, just... You're, Peter, you're amazing. That, that's, oh, that's all I can say. You're just amazing. Like, all your credits and stuff, like, you've done, of course, Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and also Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series. Oh, my word. <laughs> Animaniacs, you remember? You, rem- <laughs> you probably remember more of the things that I did than I remember. To tell oh. the truth. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's, it's all on uh, Wikipedia. It says you were in Tailspin. You've been in. You were in the. You were in the film Soul that came out about two years ago. I didn't know that. That's interesting. What was that? You were in the film Soul, what was it? the Pixar film, Soul. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I've been meaning to see that for a while. What else is there? Oh, you've been in Assassin's Creed. Wow, okay. Uh, what else is there? Wow, you have done a lot of things. Wow, I'm literally just reading. Wow, you did the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. You were the narrator. You were once the narrator for the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. Oh my word. Wow. That's all I can say. Yeah, my yeah. my young cousin who lives back in near New Orleans, Slidell, was reading. He got on the IMDb, never looked to see what I'd been doing. And he went back to visit his mother and he said, I got on that IMDb thing for, co- for my cousin and I almost fell asleep trying to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a longer list than I thought, to tell the truth. Oh, bless. Yeah, there is a lot on your Wikipedia page. What else have you done? You've done real Ghostbusters. You've done Pirates of Dark Water. Wow. Saturday Supercade, uh, New Batman Adventures, Mulan, My Neighbor Totoro, The Black Cauldron. Wow. Uh, The Aristocats. Oh, my gosh. What was it like to work on that film, Uh, The Aristocats? Aristocats, I did. uh, It was a small role. The French Milkman. Yeah. Who gets all upset because the cats almost wrecked the truck with him driving it, you know. But yeah. uh, it was a quick one. It was just a very small little role. But I get a lot of call for signatures on pictures of the French mich- mich- milkman. And I'm, I was surprised that people would know it was it was me. I don't even think I got screen credit on that. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, Scatman Crawford was in that film as well, who, of course, you would go on to work with in Transformers, he was jazz. So what was it like to work with him on that? With, uh, who did you say? I'm sorry. Scatman Crothers. Oh, Scatman. <laughs> yeah, he was terrific. Yeah, I worked with him there and over at the Hanna-Barbera. He's a, just a great guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. Very, very, very friendly and open and just a great Good voiceover actor, too. Yeah, definitely. He could say he was a number one super guy. <laughs> You're right, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Um, talking of working with people, I'd also like to know what was it like to work with uh, Frank Welker, because I know you said before, the last time you saw him, he was flying in his plane uh, overhead. So it was. I'm presuming that was the last time you saw him, then. Oh, well, Frank, yeah. Frank was the most inventive guy I've ever known it. As we said yesterday when we were having lunch, uh, he could make sounds come out of his mouth that shouldn't come out of a human being. I don't know. I don't know how he did it. But uh, we'd also pick up hints from him, like when we were doing uh, sectars, 
which didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. They wanted some sound from the creatures, and we were working and trying to figure out, well, what can we do to make it a, a unique sound? And Frank immediately came up with putting a pencil between his teeth and rattling them back and forth while he talked. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we, like all, we all had to learn to put a pencil between our teeth and talk. Feels like chatting. He's really a talented guy. I have Such a pencil a right guy. here. I'm going to try it. It's like chattering teeth. Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but it will pick it up on the microphone really well. Yeah, exactly. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah. And I think um, it was uh, Alan Oppenheimer who was the one who taught a lot of people how to talk underwater. Like, you'd put your finger between your lips and you'd flap it up and down. So, like, this is the kind of voice that you'd use for sea spray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's so cool. Al Alan and I were on a bowling team together. I was, I am probably one of the worst bowlers on earth, but we'd have a good time just going over and oh. throwing a few lanes. And yeah. It was a good time. We had a good time that summer. Well, I'm glad you had fun with him. Definitely. Yeah. He, he'd be, he'd be great to uh, come on my show as well. Yeah. I'm trying to think of. Some other Transformers stars. Uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, oh yeah, uh, Susan Blue's another one. Yeah, she was Arcee in a, in the film. Susan Blue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she was yeah. also the voice director for uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well. So. Yeah, she directed all of them, really. Yeah, indeed. <clears throat> I'm trying to think, what episodes did Grapple appear in? Oh, he um he only appeared in uh. Uh, well, it said he was dying of what island was the first one he appeared in, which was, uh, I don't even know if that's like season one or not, uh, but, you know. Um, <laughs> it says he appeared, first appeared in dying of what island, um, which, it, oh, it's season two, and then he appeared in the movie, and then, well, we never saw him again, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Bless. But, yeah, I'm having, still having a look, yeah. You were, so... You weren't in Transformers after the film then, because I'm looking at all the um, uh, the episodes that your characters were in, uh, but and, and I can't find any uh, post uh, movie episodes like season three or four. It seems to be all season one and two episodes. So I'm presuming like you weren't involved uh, after the movie. Right, right. Yeah. yeah the thing that I've done more than um, almost anything else. Yeah. Is stage shows, and there are no no stage shows uh, mentioned in on IMDb because that's just movie and TV credits. Yeah. But the stage work that I've done is stuff that I'm as proud of as anything else, probably more in some ways. Oh. But of course, I've reached an age now where I don't uh, I don't really audition for plays anymore. Well, for all with the COVID thing, all the theaters were closed anyway. So. Yeah. That yeah. uh, that kind of put a uh, halt to all of our stage work out here. Oh yeah. But they're opening up again, so it seems to be doing well. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, I'd definitely hire you if I was doing a show in LA and I needed, I needed someone to be in it. I would come straight to you. You'd be the first person I'd ask. And that's a compliment. That is a compliment. Like, I'd I'd give a well, job to anyone you. who needs it. You're welcome. You're welcome, Peter. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes! Yes, because you were in the Country Bear Jamboree at Disney. Well, you still are, because the ride's still there. I think, yeah, it's... it's... still running at Walt Disney World, yeah. Not yeah. at Disneyland, but... Yeah, yeah, Disneyland was replaced with the Winnie the Pooh ride, which you were also, which you were also on. I think you're the narrator on that one, I believe. Right, yeah. yeah. Just It used to run all through the ride, but they thought it took too long to get people through, so they cut it down to... Just the opening as you go through the gate, through, through the portal there. It's about the only narration it has now. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yeah. Magic Kingdom in uh, Florida and then uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Wow. So is it? does it have an English track at uh, Tokyo Disneyland or do they have to, um, did they have to translate it into Japanese? Uh, you mean in Japanese, in the one in uh, Tokyo Disneyland? Yeah. Yeah, it's all translated, yeah. Ah, right, so... There's no English track. Ah, right, so you, your, your voice can only be heard in the Magic Kingdom one. I see. Wow, I need to, right. I need to nip over there, actually. I've been... <laughs> I've, I know, like, I've always wanted to go to New York, Florida, and California. Florida for, like, all the theme parks, like Universal Studios, because I know they've got the Ledoux Rights Ripsaw Falls there, which is 
which is a ride that I've wanted to go on since I was about 14. I've always wanted to go to America. Um, and California, because everyone I know is there. And also, yeah, Magic yeah. Uh, Florida for the like Magic Kingdom as well. Also to go on the Country Bear Jamboree and like uh, maybe like Splash Mountain or Space Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. You know, I as a kid, I never, I did, I, I'd never been abroad. Um, I didn't grow up like going to Disneyland Paris, which is just across the Euro Tunnel from me, uh, which is quite sad um, because a lot of my classmates would just come back from. Um, uh, would just come back from uh, Paris and say, oh my god, I just went to Disneyland Paris and it was really fun and uh, it would be people in my class who would like go in groups like if their families were close. That just never happened with me. I'd just be going in a caravan somewhere in Wales, which, to be fair, looking back at it, it sounds a lot better. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, Wales is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, so with that, I wanted to ask you, Peter, have you ever been to England? And if not, would you like to visit? I went to England uh, back in 21 because it was just a month before 9-11 happened here. Oh. Uh, and I guess it was more than that. It was, yeah, it was in the end of uh, May, the beginning of June that I was there. Uh, and that's the only trip I ever made. I've all, I'd always wanted to go. And I went to London and also to Paris while I was in the area, so to speak. Wow. Got to the top of the Eiffel Tower, which I loved, and uh, saw a couple of shows while I was in, uh, stage shows, I mean, while I was in London. So I had a great time, yeah. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it'd be lovely of you to come back, especially, like, maybe we have our own Transformers convention over here. We have TF Nation. It would be really lovely to see you at TF Nation maybe next year, because I know the one this year is happening next month, but I can't go because I'm, uh, I'm going to my first ever wedding, surprisingly. I've never been to one in all my 18 years of living. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, next year for sure I'll be at um, TF Nation. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll, have, I'll have to try and invite you, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there are so, a lot of um, Transformers actors who haven't been to England before, so... The ones who haven't been to England, I'm trying to get to TF Nation. I've spoken to two other people who have been involved in the franchise and they said they'd love to come and, you know, they're, they're currently in talks with the organisers and stuff. So, yeah, I suppose there, 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 there is a way. There is a way that it will happen. So I will definitely put your name forward to the, uh, the people behind TF Nation and say, <laughs> we need Peter well, Renaday over here, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do a whole lot of travelling these days. I'm getting a little... A little ancient for that, but, uh, uh, and I don't have anybody to take care of my, my cat here when I'm gone, so Oh, you have a cat? Uh, I don't travel too far, yeah, oh yeah. Aww. Yeah, she's, she's something, she's, she's a lot of company, she's fun. Oh. Katrina. Oh, Katrina, is that her name? Oh, bless. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, I, people said, why do you name him, why did you name her after a hurricane? I said I wasn't thinking of the hurricane. <laughs> I was thinking of the cute little flirt in Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Oh, the yeah. Disney movie. Yeah. Oh, bless. <laughs> what, uh, what sort of cat is she, if you don't mind me asking? What's that? What sort of cat is uh, Katrina? Like, is she is she a tabby? Is she a Maine Coon? Is she... Oh, yeah. She's uh, she's kind of a... She's a tabby with long hair. Oh, bless her. Oh, well, it, I love uh, hearing about all, like, the furry friends that all my guests have. I mean, I've seen on a camera, I've had dogs, I've had cats, I've even had a bird once on my interview. <laughs> so that was really oh, yeah. cool. Yeah, it's just so nice because, like, they're completely different species and, like, they're living with voice actors who can change their voices to any way. Like, imagine talking to your pet in one voice and then another and then it just it would really confuse them. <laughs> Yeah, it would just be so sweet, though. Oh, bless. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you found a friend in Katrina because she sounds like a really lovely cat. Yeah, she's great. Oh, bless her. Uh, talking of animals, I'd like to move on to maybe some of the Disney afternoon shows that you've done. It says that you've done DuckTales and Darkwing Duck and Tailspin as well. Yeah. So what was it like to work for Disney? Um, not just for the Country Bear Jamboree, but also for like the animated programs as well. Oh, yeah, I had a great time. Well, for quite a few years, I had a regular job at Disney's, too, uh, an eight-to-fiver. 
and uh, it was there that I, there used to be a, a, an acting group on the lot called the Disney Players. They did a show, not every year, but from time to time, to raise money for the John Tracy Clinic, which was Walt's favorite charity. Ah. And people saw me in the plays and got the idea that that I could do some voiceover things for them or whatever, on-camera things too. So it, that's what got me started, really, as a regular employee at Disney Studios. Wow. Yeah, that must have been really cool. Like, I'm glad you yeah, can it start was. that. It's been so cool to <clears throat> see. Um, what about uh, your work as Splinter in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Because, of course, you had... Rob Paulson, Cam Clark, Barry Gordon, and Townsend Coleman. I've had um, two of them on my podcast already and trying to get the other two. Yeah, I've already had uh, Rob and Townsend oh, yeah. on and just trying to get Barry and Cam on now, so that'd be really cool. So, of course, Splinter's, like, probably one of the most iconic uh, villains, uh, along with, like, Shredder. Um, I think I think Shredder and Splinter, if, like, someone were to ask me, name a villain from TMNT, I would say either Splinter or Shredder. Those are the first names that come to mind. So what was it like to do that show? Um, do you still voice Splinter to this day, may I ask? Do I do what? Do you still uh, voice act as Splinter uh, nowadays for cartoons? That's oh, say- no, no. It's, uh, the, whole, the whole thing is taken over. The only one that's from the original cast that's still, uh, still doing voiceovers for them and not the character that he played. He played Raphael in our show. Yeah, Rob Paulson. Rob Paulson. Yeah. And now he's playing Donatello in the other show, in the newer show. Yeah, yeah. It always says here that um, uh, Townsend Coleman also voiced Splinter. I don't know when that would have been. I don't know if maybe you weren't available he, for a Yeah, session. he took... I was in the hospital Oh. when he did Splinter. And he did it for about four episodes. And only on the condition, and this was shows you what kind of a great guy he is, he said to Fred Wolf, Fred asked him if he could do it, you know, while I, I was in a hospital. And he said, uh, yeah, I can, I'll try it, I'll do it. But if it works, then you'll have to send the checks to Pete. I don't want the checks. Oh. <laughs> and he did it. <laughs> oh, bless him. He's such a great guy. What a great guy he is. Yeah, he's so lovely. It would be lovely to meet him in person. It would be, it would, it would be lovely to meet all four turtles in person one day. They haven't done... A, con- a convention <clears throat> in England. I'm like, I'm surprised because it was actually quite popular over here. Of course, they changed. Well, they, the- yeah. yeah, they changed the name to Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because apparently the name, the term ninja was offensive or it was deemed violent for British yeah. kids' telly. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So there is. I do have some merchandise that does ha- does say Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, which is quite cool they are like vhs tapes i have to take a photo of them and send you an email of them yeah there is there is a few stuff i'd like to send you over email i know like i can't show you over the phone but it'd be cool to like send them over because i have i've met uh because you were obviously in the new batman adventures and batman the animated series i've met kevin conroy um who was obviously batman Uh yeah what was it like to work with him uh i don't remember what we did uh do you know what was it that we did together? Um, it says you're in an episode of Batman the Animated Series. You were the second Longshoreman, and then you did the real, no, the new Batman Adventures. You were an auctioneer in that episode. Yeah, well, some of those that are smaller, you know, just yeah. real quickie parts. Yeah. <clears throat> you come and you record them and you're gone. You don't remember much about them. Yeah. To tell the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well... Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to try and dig out what episodes you're in, to be fair, because I might have seen some of the episodes that you were in, so I'll check them out in a minute. Um, I know that you've done a one few... The... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the... Uh, I guess it was DuckTales that I did with Sally Struthers mm-hmm. was a kind of a cartoon version of the ghost and Mrs. Muir, oh. and I played the ghost star. Uh-huh. What would be the same character virtually in a cartoon version mm-hmm. that was fun ah i see wow yeah i'm having a look on a here we go the yeah you were you were the auctioneer in the new batman episode episode the demon within and then for batman the animated series you were you oh he said you did additional voices in batman mask of the phantasm uh, and then in the uh, episode terror in the sky for batman the animated series 
as well. Oh, yeah. You were the second long show, man. Yeah, who else was in that episode? Let's have a look who was in that. It was Kevin Conroy, Efren Zimbus Jr., Rene Aubergineau. Um, Pat Music was in the episode. Wow. All right. Yeah. So, it was like that. Yeah. Um, I was, oh, yeah, I was going to say, um, you've done a few D23 uh, events, haven't you? I think. You know, D23. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, you've done a few of uh, panels about uh, Voices of the Parks and stuff like that. Um, I think you've... Yeah, Mark, Mark Silliman was on those too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, uh, I think Corey Burton was on a few of them at one point. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I was going to ask, like, what was it like to um, work with Corey Burton if you ever did? Or, like, you know, do the uh, the the panels with him? Corey is great. And we, Corey and I met years before we did the Disney things together. Uh, when it, there was a radio show, and I'm trying to remember the name of it now, Alien Worlds. Mm-hmm. And it was a science fiction radio show, and that's when, that's when I met Corey. He's one of the most talented guys around. I mean, he is so versatile, versatile and does a fantastic job with Captain Hook, of course. That's one of... One of his favorites, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Yeah, Captain Hawk is literally my favorite Disney villain. Literally, yeah, no one else can top it. Yeah, I um. He's amazing. Yeah, I spoke to him. Um, I think yeah, it was during the pandemic, and it was uh, I think it was before I actually emailed you. Um, so <laughs> I, I spoke to him, and because he does uh, Ludwig uh, von Drake as well, which was originally Paul Fries, and then Captain Hook was originally Hans Conried, and he also does uh, Bullwinkle sometimes, which is Bill Scott. I'm like, that is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. How you literally have um, all the all three of these guys in your vo- vocal box. It's it's scary. It's genuinely really scary. <laughs> and we just laughed at him. Somebody, just so I think before he got to do. Captain Hook, mm-hmm. somebody knew that he could do a, a great Hans Conrad, you know. And Hans Conrad was on one of the shows <clears throat> that Corey was working on. So they said, oh, come on over here and <clears throat> do, uh, do do Captain Hook for Hans. Oh, yeah. I and remember. he said, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. He said, oh, yeah, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> so he went over and he did a few lines. And Hans Conrad looked at him and said, <clears throat> well, that's very good. But of course, I don't have a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, yeah. Oh man, I think yeah. It's 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 weird to think that they had met, but there's no photo. Like, it, it it's it's kind of surreal to be fair. Like he's met all these guys, and then like you know, like wow. It's it must have been so great to have worked with these guys, and I know a lot of them have um unfortunately passed away now. Um. But yeah, yeah it yeah. must have been so great to work with all these people. Definitely. It really has been, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I've been pretty lucky. Yeah, you're you're definitely really lucky. I think I think everyone who has been in the voiceover um, uh, circle at least at one time in Los Angeles has been quite lucky to work with some great people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, and you did Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost as well. You were you were That's right. Mr. McKnight in yeah. So what was it like uh, doing that? I can't. I haven't I actually haven't seen it for a while. So what was it like? Uh, doing it was Scooby-Doo? it was a lot of fun. The, the good thing about that, uh, oh. my wife used to really enjoy Scooby Doo long before I did the part. <laughs> so. I was glad to be able to get on Scooby Doo just to please her. <laughs> oh bless! Oh wow! Yeah, um, I had that growing up on VHS. <laughs> if it makes you feel old, yeah, that was really good film. And of course, it was like it was like the start. No, no, hang on, no, it wasn't the start. Uh, it was it was like part of the uh, director video series that was animated in Japan. I think the first one was Zombie Island, then it was Witch's Ghost, then it was Alien Invaders, and then uh, Cyber Chase. Um, so yeah, it was like that. Those four, it's like those four are a special place in my heart. Not just because I grew up watching them, but also because having them on VHS just gives it that you know nice old school feeling. You know. Yeah, I, I think the uh, I think the episode of Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost that I did, the fellow who played Scooby, yeah, came Scott all Mills. the way from Texas. 
Yeah, Scott Innes, yeah. He lived in Texas and flew over here to do the voiceover for Scooby. Wow. Yeah, so I... yeah. That was, uh, that was, yeah, so Zombie Island was done after, shortly after Don Messick died, uh, who obviously was originally Scooby-Doo. Yeah, and he did Transformers as well, I forgot to say. He was Ratchet, yeah. Yeah, what, yeah. what was it like to work with uh, Don Messick, may I ask? What's that? What was it like to work with Don Messick, may I ask? Oh, he was good. Uh, he was he was a nice guy. He, uh, I did something with him, one of the early things that I did, when uh, we were doing a soundtrack for the Knott's Berry Lion ride at Knott's, Knott's Berry Farm. Oh. Riding on the old Knott's Berry Lion. Do, do, do. <laughs> but he was, uh, he was the narrator, basically, the the main voice, and I was doing a, a Bing Crosby like bullfrog, sounded a little bit like Bing. So <laughs> he was great. He was a talented guy. Wow, that's great to know. But yeah, because like wow, Don. Don is like someone who I've um, admired for a really long time. So yeah, that is really lovely to hear. Definitely. Uh, and I'd like to also ask you, Peter, you were also in... you got to bear with me while I remember. Oh, man, what was it? You were in another thing as well. I can't remember what it was. G.I. Joe. I don't know why I forgot that. Um, you were, you oh, were yeah, Dr. Marsh. Yeah, and it was pretty much like the same right, as Transformers, right. except it was with soldiers instead of robots. So I'm pretty... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, you did that at the same time as um, Transformers, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think G.I. Yeah, Joe was one of the first things I did at Wally Bogue's place. Ah. I Wally see. Bogue, not Wally Bogue, I mean Wally Bogue. Wally Bogue. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I was going to ask, have you done... There was a TFCon that happened in Los Angeles at the uh, in March. Uh, I can't remember. Did you go to that? Uh, in this, this year? Yeah, in, in Burbank. Oh, no, I didn't go to that, no. Oh, I think my friend Sam Cosman went to it, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I didn't go, no. Uh, that was at the, across the, from the, from the airport there, right? Yeah. At the Marriott Hotel? Yeah, yeah. that's it. No, I've been to things there, but I didn't go into anything this year. Ah, uh, I see, yeah. I, I, I tried to go, but, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I tried, well... I don't have a passport, and I was gutted not to go. I was like, oh, I'm just going to wallow in my self-pity the whole weekend. <laughs> so, that uh, was that. Um, so, yeah. Um, one final thing I'd like to end this interview on, if that's okay, is wh- uh, what, are you, what are you currently doing right now, Peter? Are you still voice acting? Are you retired? What, what, what do you enjoy doing, like, during the week? Um, I'm pretty much retired, uh... I watch a lot of old movies on TCM, and oh, wow. and I I go to see. Well, now that the theaters are opening up, I go to see my friends if they're performing somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would kind of like to do a play again, but it's been about three years since I've done anything on stage. Oh, wow. and you run out of roles. I mean, there are only so many old geezer roles to play, you know. And the last one I did was "You Can't Take It With You," and I was. The grandfather in that, the uh, Lionel Barrymore role. So it's, uh, but I still enjoy seeing my friends and the younger part of the, my second family out here in California. Well, that's good. The Straptons do a lot of shows, or did a lot of shows mm-hmm. before all this COVID stuff hit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's glad to see that you are getting out and about again. Um, even like I suppose, yeah, we're still in a pandemic. To be fair, because COVID is still around. I mean, I've just only just recovered from it, so yeah, it is not nice. Um, I've unfortunately had it twice, so. Yeah, oh, did you? Oh, yeah, God. I had it in January, then I just had it again last month. So yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, but you're okay now. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I'm double vaxxed. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Yeah. So Peter. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having a great conversation with me. It's been lovely to talk to you. Uh, Same here, Amber. 
Appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. To you at home, thank you so much for listening to this interview with the one and only Peter Renaday. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, show your Transformers friends or anyone who could perhaps be interested because this is a good... This is this is this is the second audio interview I've done. I think they're better to listen to when you're multitasking, when you can't look at your screen. So you can just you can just hear it and you can listen along, or you can just listen to it going to sleep or anything like that. Uh, but you listen to it whatever your way you want. And with that, I'll say goodbye to you guys watching from your houses or maybe from from outside your house or yeah. So thank you for watching. Be kind. Stay safe. Stay happy. And be kind to yourself. Be kind to others and to yourself. With that, thank you for watching. Bye. Ow.